Hello everybody, today I'm going to tell you what activities that were added in the Criminal Enterprises DLC are worth it and which ones you should avoid in terms of making money, as well as give you tips on how to complete them easier. When I talk about payouts, it will be what they are after any first time bonuses. There's only a couple things I think should be avoided, so I'll start with those. First is the Operation Paper Trail missions. There are six of them and once they're not double, they'll pay only about fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars, which is about the same as the original contact missions from 2013. But the Operation Paper Trail missions are harder and take a decent bit of time to complete. They can also be kind of irritating. In the last one, you have to find four fuses in the dark in a pretty large area, one of which is behind crates you must destroy to get to. It took me like 20 minutes to find. This is going to be some bullshit like it's behind these. Oh my fucking god, that is bullshit. But I do think you should play through them at least once if only to get the trade prices. But for making money, they are terrible. Next, the clubhouse bar resupply missions. To start one, you go to Cindy and press left on the D-pad. While you don't need to be an MC president, it won't let you do them if you're registered as a CEO. All you have to do is go get a van full of alcohol and take it back to the, your clubhouse. The problem is an absurd amount of enemies are sent after you and there really isn't a way to stop them from destroying most of the supplies. You can, however, pick the van up with the cargo bob. It does struggle a bit to lift it, so you can't get very high, but because you're not in the van, it doesn't seem to spawn enemies. If it does, try to fly over mountains or water and other places they can't drive. Once you're at the clubhouse, carefully set the van down in an open area, land the cargo bob, and drive the van into the circle. After all that, you get $10,000 for doing the mission, and $5,000 every in-game day or 48 minutes in real life, the same amount you get from an arcade for doing absolutely nothing. And I don't know how long supplies last because it doesn't tell you how many you have, so I probably won't be doing very many of these. Now into things I think are worth it, starting with the nightclub source missions. To start one, just call Johan. These are similar to business battles, and on top of the goods you get, you also get $10,000. There are two missions. First is the removal truck. Just stop in front of it and kill the driver, then the passenger. They do have quite a bit of health, so I'd recommend using a machine gun. The other one is also pretty straightforward. You just have to grab a crate off a tugboat. The easiest way to do it is keep your distance on the Mark II and clear out the enemies, then land on the tugboat and grab the crate. If it's not letting you back on your Mark II, try walking into it as you press Y or Triangle. These missions have a 20 minute cooldown. Next is modifying customers' bikes. If your clubhouse has a custom bike shop, you can modify and deliver bikes just like you can do with cars in your auto shop. Differences are you have to deliver the bike yourself and it always costs $10,000 to modify the bike and you get $50,000 profit for delivering it as long as you don't damage it, so definitely worth it. Next is exporting mixed goods. If you have staff sourcing CEO credits, which I will talk about in a minute, you will be able to do these missions. I think it's once every in-game day, but I'm not 100% sure. You start them by going to your office and talking to your assistant. A flatbed will spawn outside one of your warehouses, and you have to take it to the same place where you deliver exotic exports. You may get a wanted level, you cannot call Esther and dying doesn't get rid of it. It's a three star outrunning a helicopter in the flatbed is difficult. So if there's not a tunnel nearby, your best bet is to get out and escape it in a different vehicle. You get $50,000 for delivering it, which is definitely worth it. Next, ammunition deliveries, which are basically the same as exporting mixed goods. Twice per full set of supplies, this Dune Looter will load up with excess weapon parts that can be delivered to a random ammunition for $50,000, meaning if you do both, they will completely pay for your supplies. Lastly, warehouse staff. In each of your crate warehouses, you will find a staff member. Walk up to them and press left on the D-pad and you can pay $7,500 for them to source crates. It takes them one in-game day, which again is 48 minutes in real life, to source one to three crates, with one being most common and three being least common. Manually sourcing three crates at a time costs $6,000 per crate. Through staff, it's $7,500 for one to three. So staff are about the same, if not cheaper per crate, depending on the odds. You have to go to your warehouses, but time-wise I'd say it's worth it because going to all your warehouses is quicker than doing a source mission for three crates, and you're guaranteed five crates if you have five warehouses. And staff don't affect your ability to source manually, so you can do both at the same time. That's everything covered. If you have any questions about the update or GT Online in general, put them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. If you're watching this in the future, check the pinned comment to see if there's been any changes to any of this. I will do this again for future updates and maybe some stuff that's already in the game, so subscribe if you want to see that. Thank you so very much for watching. Goodbye.